of Fugitive. A QM production. Starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball, an innocent victim of blind justice, falsely convicted for the murder of his wife. Reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house. Freed him to hide in lonely desperation, to change his identity, to toil at many jobs. Freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime. Freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest stars in tonight's story, Suzanne Plachette, R.G. Armstrong. Tonight's episode, All the Scared Rabbits. The ad in the newspaper reads, Wanted, someone to drive. Or a fugitive, anxious to move on. Your hair looks so pretty. Why don't you just carry it? Okay. Now, I want you to be sure and be a good girl. Remember, your mommy hasn't been well lately. I know she hasn't. There. Now, have a good time. Okay, Anne. Bye. Bye. Well, have you made any plans for the weekend? Oh, you ought to know better than that. You better than anybody, except maybe for Daddy. Except for Daddy. You're still jealous. He's dead now, you know. De mortuis rex. Yes. And long live his little princess. Now, if only you had tried to make me your little princess. Can't you ever be serious? <laughs> the trouble with you is you spend too much time with your guinea pigs, and they're a very grim bunch. Everything's a joke with you, isn't it? I'm sorry, it's a curse. I'll get Nancy. Dean. Yes? Why did you take her away from me? I didn't take her away. You relinquished custody voluntarily. Well, you must admit you were pretty persuasive. I was in a position to give Nancy a good home. Look, Peg, we've been through this a dozen times. The court made its decision. You can visit as much as you want, but I retain custody. And having another child, how many do you need? That'll make it nice for Nancy. Dean, I'm all alone since Papa died. I know that, and I'm sorry, I really am. But we've got to think of Nancy. She's happy now, and loves her. She isn't Anne's child, she's mine. I may as well be blunt with you. I was not particularly anxious to let you have Nancy, even for the weekend. It was Anne who persuaded me. Oh. Well, that's very generous of her. Thank her for me, will you? I'm sorry to cut this short, but I've got to get back to the lab. Yes. Well, I appreciate your staying away this long. Nancy? Oh, there you are. Bye. Take good care of her. Leaking oil. Oh, Joe, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Nancy. Nancy, this is Mr. Taft. Hello, Nancy. Hi. Would you like to sit in the front seat with us, or would you rather sit in the back with the luggage? In the back. She's antisocial, takes after her old man. Start looking for a place to stay. You pick it, I'm not fussy. You tired, darling? 
No. What have you got there? Where? Under your arm. Nothing. Just my bunny. Well, where did you get it? In my bag. Does Daddy know you took it? Uh-huh. Gave them to me. Are you sure? For Easter. He's an Easter bunny. Well, you shouldn't have brought it. It's going to make a mess. Please, Mommy. He's so soft and cuddly. Might be a good idea. Keep her occupied on the trip. Huh? Yeah? You're going to spring for a new set of sea coats? I'll buy a cage in the morning. Please, Mommy. Okay. You win. One more mouth to feed. What's the difference? I can't marry you after all. Why not? I she'd spoil her rotten. I guess I wouldn't. some business to take care of. Huh? Oh, hi. Can I help you? Yeah, a chocolate cone, please. Double or single? Double. Anything else? No, I'll be off. Howdy, Mona. Hi, Frank. Coffee? I'll make you something cool. Paper come in yet? Yeah, right over there. Come on, Nancy. Now, I sure hate to disturb anybody enjoying themselves so much, but you were sitting smack on my baseball scores. Those Astros, they get 12 hits to seven, they still lose the ball game. Be careful with your ice cream cone. You don't make a mess in the car, huh? just in here with that little girl. What name do you call her by? Nancy. That's what I thought. Now, this is Frank Brill, Dalhart, calling headquarters. Now, come in, headquarters. You folks got troubles. <laughs> well, trying not to sound so happy about it. Well, we all got to make a living, lady. Well, that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Getting picked up for speeding. Now, well, what's the diagnosis? Diagnosis? Well, no, that's... That's hard to tell, doctor. Sounds like it's in the crankcase, but it'd be anything. 
Oh, darling, so will we all. Come on, we'll get some water. Hmm? Looks like we got problems, Doc. The way I diagnose it, your radiator needs immediate surgery, and we got a lot of complications in the transmission. How long is it going to take to fix it? Oh, a couple days with luck. I have to go back to school. When? Monday. Oh, she's only making it up. She doesn't go to school yet. Yes, I do. Every day. You know, that's the trouble with most marriages. Nobody talks to each other. Oh, uh, you say it'll be a couple of days, huh? Yeah, if we can locate the parts. It's a pretty old model you got there. Depends on what the junkyards have in stock. Oh, well, couldn't you patch it up? We don't care if it falls apart once we get to California. No, you'd never make it through the desert. Tell you what, sometimes I buy some of these old junkers and fix them up myself. I see that one over there? She'll get you to California and then some. How much? Oh, that broken down old heap and $150 in cash? $150? Well, I'll make it 100 and that's my bottom offer. That must be a big accident. You folks are gonna have to make up your mind. I want to hustle on down there with the record. All right. Okay, okay, I'll get the papers. I'll get the luggage. How many days is California? Oh, a couple of days. Then maybe Daddy won't get mad. Well, why would Daddy get mad? About the bunny. But it's your bunny, isn't it? Uh-huh. Daddy doesn't know I have it. Something wrong? No. Sometimes mothers have to yell at their children, that's all. Well, oh, let's see if it works. We'll have music wherever we go. Oof, not that I ever regarded that as music. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't think you were interested. Would you like to hear my internationally famous lecture on music as a popular art? Why didn't you tell me about Nancy? What about her? Any child that has to go to school on Monday doesn't start out for California on Friday. Well, she'll have a long weekend. What's the difference? The difference is it's kidnapping. Oh, they know I have her? Dean wouldn't call out the Marines. He's much more civilized than that. He'll just file a lawsuit or something equally stuffy. When we stop tonight, you'll have to get yourself another driver. I see. Town. In 15 or 20 miles. You might as well leave us off there. If you want. It's not what I want. All right, I'll take you to Albuquerque. If you get there about 6 or 30, you'll be able to hire someone there. Thanks. Nancy sleep? Mm-hmm. I don't know how she does it in this heat. <laughs> Boy, my daughter picked some pet. This rabbit doesn't move, it doesn't eat. What's it about a bunny you all alone too? Joe, it's dead. What is it? I don't know. Well, isn't there some disease that rabbits get? Hello. I call it rabbit fever. I better bury it. Why bother? Why don't you just throw it away? Because there are other animals out there. And people.
Baby? Baby, wake up. Hey, how do you feel, hmm? I'm hot. Oh, no, I know. Anything else? I just feel sort of sick. Where? My neck, my head. Nancy, she's burning up with fever. She said her head hurts and her neck, too. Joe? What? I think Nancy took that rabbit from my husband's lab. What do you mean, you think? Well, I mean, I know. Dean didn't give it to her. She just took it. What could the rabbit have been injected with? What? What was your husband working on? I don't know. You said he was a research pathologist. Now, what's his specialty? Meningitis. But... Joe, I can't take her back. She's all I've got. Close that door. When did she tell you she stole the rabbit? The gas station. Well, that was hours ago. We could have stopped half a dozen places by now. We're not sure that's what's wrong. That's what you'd like to believe. Please. You're not even as grown up as she is. Nancy wants a rabbit. She takes the rabbit. You want Nancy, you take her. I need her, and you're just guessing. The rabbit's dead. That's not guessing. Now there's a fever, headache, stiffness, all symptoms of meningitis. You better pray that this jalopy holds together. Where are you taking her? To a hospital, to a doctor. You're a doctor. Even if I used to be her, I can't get the drug she needs. Yes, babe. He's my bunny. Bunny is tired. It's sleepy. I'm sleepy too. Please hurry. Come right in. But I'm afraid he's out in a call. When will he be back? Figures close to three hours at the very least. Well, can't you reach him by phone? Wish I could. There's no telephone lines out to the reservation. Well, how did they get through to him? Didn't nobody call him, Miss Franklin. Miss Franklin. Pete Black Cloud came to fetch the doctor. His wife was hemorrhaging. Is there any other doctor around? Not in a hundred miles. Mr. Franklin. There's hardly enough here to keep one doctor alive. Does Dr. White keep any antibiotics or drugs on hand? None, except what he carries in his bag. No need to keep stuff in the office. Bob Hawkins' drugstore is only down the road a bit from Dos Palos. Well, can we call him? Not without a prescription. Bob came near losing his license last time that happened. Besides, he'd be closed by now. Mrs. White, this child's in a coma. If she doesn't get help and get it soon, she could die. That's something like what they told Bob last time. Knowing him like I do, I'd say there's no chance. He's just got to help us. Just a minute. You stay here and help Mrs. White. Try to make Nancy as comfortable as possible. I'll be right back. <laughs> Yes, it's all right. Just lie down. Right. Thank you. What is keeping him? Are you sure you've never been in this part of the country before? No. And I guess I've seen your picture somewhere. Thank 
Evans, I was afraid something had happened to you. Pulse is up. Fever's increased. I tell you, Mr. Taft, every time you open your mouth, you sound more like a doctor. I was American, Corian. Have much meningitis there? Some, it's highly contagious. So what's that? Tularemic meningitis. What? It's what we're afraid of. I'm not doing any good. I can't waste any more time. Learn that in Korea? Matt, I'm to tell Mrs. Franklin that the girl's father's on his way here now. What about Taft here? I need more information before they can run a make on him. But that's not important now. How do we know he won't do something to make it worse? I don't think any of us here can take that responsibility. I can. I'm her mother. Not legally. We read all about it in the papers. If you don't let him help her, that's the same as murder. Murder? That's a mighty harsh word. Don't you think so? Not always. Of course, if you were a doctor, I'd have a little more information to feed him at headquarters. After all, there can't be that many doctors on the run, can there, Mr. Taft? No, I suppose not. Anyhow, since you ain't a doctor, I've got nothing to hold you on. But on the other hand, I can't rightly let you touch that youngster. I'd only allow a real doctor to help her. I can help it. Show me. Farm. She needs hospital treatment as soon as possible. We'll take care of it. It's for you, Matt. Albuquerque Police. Take it, will you? I got a couple of kids of my own, you know. Only they've never been sick a day in their life. Not really sick. They want to know if we've got any more information on Taft. Not a thing. But mad. Not a thing. I left a record for your husband. The drugs I administered. They're, um, they're gonna send a man down here anyway. Why didn't you want me to tell him that he's a doctor? A doctor? You think he's a doctor? Yes. Well, the way he handled that high boy, I wouldn't let him treat my mother-in-law. Well, I thought he handled it real good. Hey, sometimes I wonder about you. Now, you heard what he said to the little girl. How you feeling? Now, you know as well as I do, no doctor talks that way. A doctor to say, well, well, well. How are we today? With doctors, it's always we. I tell you, Hank, uh, I don't rightly see how I can keep a deputy on to think that man was a doctor. Yeah, well, I guess I made a mistake.
There's a bus comes through Dos Palos in about three quarters of an hour. You get out in the middle of the street and do a little waving, might stop for you. You better than traveling all that heat tomorrow. Sounds like a good idea. You can take the car. I'll drive in with you. I uh, want to thank you. What for? Anybody around here could have told you about that bus. And you are a doctor. Yes. Would you do me a favor? Well, that depends. Would you kiss me? Well, you do that well, too. What will you do now? Oh. Make sure Nancy gets safely back to the cool, intelligent arms of her father. Say goodbye for me. He likes you. Well, I like her. So does her mother. Well, how is her mother going to get back now? <laughs> well, if I remember correctly, uh, first I turn on the ignition, and then I put the car in gear. Yeah. I don't expect me to be able to regain custody if the judge finds out I can't drive Nancy to the doctor. Have a nice trip. You too. For a few moments, Richard Kemble became a doctor again, and memories were stirred of another time and another world. But this is now, and he is again a fugitive, searching for the end of a perilous road.